Okay. Hey, okay. good day, people. Welcome to Conversations with SD Booker. Today we got a special, special guest, a business partner, a friend, man, a brother. We got CEO Michael Watkins of 1619 Gaming Group. Hey, welcome. Welcome, brother. How you doing? Hey, it, man, it's an honor to be here, Book. Uh, you know, I, I followed you for now two and a half years. And, you know, it, it, to see your growth continue and to see the, the great things that you're doing, to, to be invited to be on your platform, the honor is mine. Respect. Well, thank you, brother. Thank you for those words. Uh, hey, likewise, the honor is mine to have you here. You, you one of the guys I really look up to, admire. You may not know that, but I'm watching you. I'm like, man, this guy is doing things. So I'm really honored for you to take the time out to speak with me because I know you're a busy man. So, yeah, so thank love, you. Love, love. So like I said, you are the CEO of 1619 Gaming Group. Um, I brought you on to talk about your game, your new game, your new project, uh, Big Stakes 5. But we're going to take you back before we touch on that. We'll get back to that. So okay. let's let's take it all the way back. Who is Michael Watkins? You know, <laughs> because I've seen your your previous interviews, uh, <laughs> I, I knew I knew this question was coming, <laughs> and it it, it 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 woke me up at two thirty <laughs> this morning because oh, wow, <laughs> I, I said I, I need I need uh, I need a, an, an appropriate answer, you know. But the but the reality is. Uh, and, 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 you know, I, I thought you were going to phrase it as uh, if, if an alien came from <laughs> from another world, you know, right. and they just met Mike Watkins, you know, who, who is Michael Watkins, you know. But no, I I am, and I say that with, with purpose, uh, and I know you understand the, the true meaning behind I am. Uh, uh, I, I'd like to consider myself a, a, a man, a, a servant of the people. And... You know, I, I have long pondered, like like many people do. You know, what is in fact uh, my purpose? Uh, and so, I think as a servant of the people, I'm a vehicle by which uh, the angels, as I call them, uh, communicate with others and and provide to 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 others. And so, in no one specific circumstance or methodology, but in many different ways, I think that is brought forth. And so I don't think Michael Watkins is any one particular thing other than a communicator uh, to, to those that, that need it at whatever time and by whatever vehicle. There you go. I like that. I am. I am whatever I, am. I need to be. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right. right. Exactly. Right. I, I, I am I am not the, the highest uh, by by any stretch. Right. I am, uh, but but I I am, you know, right. and and I I don't take that that lightly either because I, I do recognize it as a gift, and and that has taken a while to to understand. But uh, as as I have had many experiences, uh, book that I've looked back on. And I, I, I now realize that it, it was not me, you know, my, uh, my mind, it, it was someone, some, the, through the source speaking through me. And yeah. so my job was simply not to get in the way and allow that to flow uh, through me. Right, right. Uh, it's it's uh, beautiful that you, you stated that. I kind of want to piggyback off of that. I, I like to say, and I said this recently at a, uh, a function I was speaking at, and I was trying to explain God and what we play in that and how we're connected to God. So I use the example of, uh, say God is a, a huge, limitless body of water. Mm -hmm. Well, with no end, no limitations, you know, infinite, right? Right, right, right. We individually may be a wave, a droplet, <laughs> yeah. or or uh, a current any anything you know we yeah. all have yeah. we all have different impacts right but we all come from the source right yes now Absolutely. you may you may be a huge wave that uh 
that if you don't know your value can be easily conquered, <laughs> mm -hmm. right? But I do know a small cup of water can drown someone too. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> right? That is true. So yes, we, all, we, we all have impact. We all come from the source. And if we come from the source, I mean, God is within us. We are he, he is us. And we, we're powerful. Exactly. Now, we're not exactly. the source like you stated, but I come from right. the source. Right. Right. Well, from the source. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yes. I, I, I've spent uh, quite a bit of time, especially, I'd say probably the last 10 years uh, in earnest, searching, you know, and, and what I call it is, is my journey uh, for truth. And, and that is truth and understanding, truth and love, truth and in, in knowledge. And and that, that's what, you know, has, has been revealed to me. I, I, I started very early following the teachings of Dr. Uh, uh, Wayne Dwyer. And I would see his specials on, on PBS, you know, phenomenal presentation, phenomenal speaker, you know, rest, rest in peace, of course. But uh, when he, I heard him describe once, he, he was attempting to uh, define what is love. And he broke it down to the atom. And, and, and when, you, when you do that, and what he taught us in, in his uh, presentation that night was that the atom itself is not a connected piece of, of being. You know, the molecules that you have your neutron, your, uh, your proton and electrons, but they're not touching, they're not physically touching. Mm -hmm. And he's and he, so what he was saying is that love is what connects those things. And so, you know, that that in between and the so bonding nature. Yeah. Bonding. Exactly. And so, you know, that when I started that that journey, that that's kind of what led me to the point where I am today that helped me understand and realize, uh, you know, what where where I fit in you know, right. in the in right. that role, in that purpose. Wow. Wow, I never thought of that. I, I don't even think I heard that from Dwight, but uh, wow, that's powerful. Yeah, wow. yeah. Wow. So- The, the, power, the, power, of, in, the power of intention, if, if yes. you go back and, and check yes. that one out. That, that, that was from that presentation. Yes, your, your why. Why am I mm -hmm. doing this? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And from your why, you'll, you'll come to the understanding, is this rooted in righteousness? love or is rooted in ego like what is yes. this rooted in? yeah why why yes. why am i doing this why do i want this right 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 absolutely absolutely yeah. and yeah. and and i i have i you know not necessarily karma uh but to the extent that if if my what what i'm involved in is not based in truth and based in love then i already know it's not going to succeed right. and so I'm, I'm very keen uh, to make sure that if I have say within the methodology of whatever, you know, the process, that it, it is in fact based and rooted in those principles because otherwise it's not going to succeed. Right, right. Yeah, I, mean, I agree. I agree. Uh, once again, people, we have CEO Michael Watkins of 1619 Gaming Group with us here to talk about his new project, Big Stakes 5. We'll get to that, but I want to touch on his history. How did he get into the business? Um, is, is is he competent? Should we buy into Michael Watkins' project, basically? So, so let's first let's address the elephant in the room. Okay. Obviously, you're a black man. Yeah. And you're in the gaming industry. Uh, we don't see that often, <laughs> you know. Now there are some right. people. Uh, in the gaming in industry, uh, prominent black people, uh, but I don't think uh, there's enough of us mm -hmm, on the mm -hmm. business end. Very true. Right? right? I mean, you have uh, like, uh, was it Andrew Augustine, Gordon Bellamy, uh, those those people. But um, and and maybe there is a lot of us, but we're just not the the average consumer or spectator is not tapped in enough to know if we have a big stake, no pun intended, <laughs> in right, right. The, the gaming industry. So yeah, yeah. let's take it back. How did you get into the gaming industry uh, as a consumer? How, how long have you been in it as a consumer? Because not all children are into gaming. So what 
what was it about the gaming that really took you by storm? You know, it, it was through, I, I, I think, uh, SD, I need to frame how I came into uh, gaming. Uh, and, so, and so not to make the story too long, no, uh, no. but, but to, to add a proper context of how this particular adventure uh, came to part, my, came, came about. My business partner, uh, Neil Allen and I, we did the first ever uh, soccer, a Mexican professional soccer match in the Southeast. Wow. And uh, this was all the way back in 2005. And we brought uh, Club America, which is the equivalent in, in Mexican professional soccer, the Dallas Cowboys, let's say. Uh, and when we, when we did that, no one thought we would, would succeed. And so we, we uh, said, no, we, we can do that. You know, everybody said, well, first, you know, to your <laughs> very first point, you're black. And then secondly, you don't speak the language. You know, you, you don't, I, I didn't speak Spanish. But we were successful, had a huge event, and you know we like to tease, and you know although we really are serious when we say you know when you look at soccer now in Atlanta with with Atlanta United for example, you got eighty thousand in the Georgia Dome. We started that, you know, but okay. Uh, but when we when we did that, we realized there was an undercurrent, if you will, of amateur soccer players all throughout Atlanta. And it, it was huge in terms of the, the revenue that was being generated on a weekly basis. And so we figured, okay, obviously we, we can't do and compete with the World Cup, but there can be an equivalent for amateur soccer players. These guys, they play every weekend. You know, when I was in college, we would drive down uh, George, George Washington Parkway and you see the guys playing soccer every Sunday, every weekend, you know, and that, that happens in cities all across the country, right. amateur players. Right. So we said, you know what, we're going to do a million dollar soccer uh, tournament. And we set sail on that, on that venture. <clears throat> we were fortunate to have huge sponsors. Uh, you know, I mean, and we're talking Fortune 500 sponsor levels. We had television through Gold TV. We had even based on my relationship with uh, the late great Lamar Hunt, who had just built Frisco uh, Park, that you know now home of the, the Dallas Star, uh, not Dallas Stars, but the uh, the Dallas. Uh, and so we were putting this incredible event together and. United States Soccer Federation rolled in on us and essentially, you know, let's call it what it is. It was a shakedown. And so they wanted 15%. They weren't going to help market. They weren't going to help promote. They weren't going to sell any tickets, weren't going to help get any sponsors. And we're like, why would we just give you 15%? Right. So we put it on the shelf. We go to Vegas to celebrate uh, Neil's 50th uh, birthday, just surprise celebration. One of the guys that works with us brings a, a young lady to, to the event. And, you know, you, we were, in fact, we're at the Bellagio and having drinks, just socializing. And, you know, you kind of common courtesy, hey, what do you do? You know, you knew, introduce right. yourself kind of thing. She says, I'm a professional domino player. So we're like, oh, everybody laugh, ha, ha, ha. You know, <laughs> professional domino player. We all say that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, right. really, how much how much money did you make, you know, Miss Professional Domino Player? She said, Well, I made about 75 to 90,000. Oh, really? Okay. And how how did you do this? And so she proceeded to explain it to us. We like, oh, hmm. We can take the soccer model, apply it to dominoes and do a million dollar domino tournament. Okay, well, then we, uh, we the, but the first question was, is there a governing body? Because we did not want another group to roll in on us after we put all this effort, all this work into it, got all these different things lined up. I mean, and, 
and and SD, when I say lined up, I mean even we even met with then mayor uh uh the billionaire that just ran for president um oh, wow. out of New York. Uh, um yeah, I know you're talking about uh, his, yeah. Uh, his name slips my mind, but the, the billionaire uh, that right. was then mayor of New York. Right. And, you know, we went with his team. We, you know, we were traveling all literally across the country. But anyway, uh, fast forward, we said, okay, we can do that, do the same thing, do the model. But then uh, the, the whole idea was, okay, in the traditional domino game, you play uh, with using pen and paper. And, you know, look, hey, you might be my guy, but can I trust that you're gonna write down my score correctly? Right. And so we needed a, a, a mechanism, if you will, to keep the integrity of the game. For yeah, we call that, like, yeah, we call that pencil, yeah. uh, pencil whipping. <laughs> pencil whipping, there you go. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and, and so, you know, that was, that was the impetus uh, of how the game, game was created. And that was, that was my introduction to to gaming in in the true sense because prior to that i tried uh my wife you know she she's fortunate she she works for gamestop and wow. so uh you know she she gets to bring home different games at different times um at one point when i was working for my grandfather's foundation we we had sony as one of the sponsors. So wow. Sony gave PlayStations to the, the guys that were participating in the game. They gave them games. And of course, I got one, you know, as CEO of, of the foundation. Right. Well, I played SD, I played one night Grand Theft Auto. It had just come out. Next thing I knew from the time that I started playing, it was three and a half hours later. Oh, it's I, easy. Easy. <laughs> easy. I said, I, I can't do this. If, if, if there is such a thing that's going to get me engrossed <laughs> and take right. my time, and I have no idea how long I've been playing, I have no concept of time, right. I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. And so, but that, you know, but my point is, that was my introduction to, and so I thought, hmm, I won't ever be a gamer. Even when we created the game, I was not a domino player. I didn't play dominoes growing up, and I'm not a, a poker player. Either, either. So, oh. yeah. But you know, we, we'll talk about it. But that 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 helped me in the end. Right, right. So I was curious about this. Where did the name sixteen nineteen gaming group come from? What what is that? What's the story behind that? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. You know, you you alluded to the fact that there are so few uh, African Americans in in gaming, uh, and while you have a, a very select few uh, at the top. And you do have quite a number of programmers and coders uh, that are, you know, working for these different companies, gaming companies and whatnot, but very few are at the, at the head uh, in the C-suite. Right. So uh, 1619 is an opportunity for us to pay homage to our ancestors that, uh, you know, while they made the trek across unknown seas, we're now creating that bridge uh, in the digital divide and, and now sailing the, the digital seas. So it's an opportunity for us to pay homage to those that came before us. Uh, 1619 obviously is a, a very point, a uh, very important point in the demarcation of, you know, when our people uh, were no longer free, if you will. And so it's, it's really out of respect and, and honor for those that came before us that, that paved the way. They, they imprinted us with the ability to survive and do anything you know, that we want to do. Uh, and so for us, there's no greater way to pay uh, respect and homage to, to those that came before us. Wow, I agree. I agree, powerful, profound name. Um, you alluded to, you were, and we, I, we won't, uh, uh, you know, touch on this too long, but you alluded to you were governing or running your fa your grandfather's foundation. I uh, just want to let the people know your grandfather is is the late and the great, respected, honorable Coach Eddie. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Coach Eddie Robinson, so of Grambling University. Uh, so 
piggybacking off of that or, or, or extended, expounding on that, it's obvious here in your story that you weren't necessarily a gamer uh, per se, you know, in the, in the, um, in a typical sense, but it's obvious that you have that entrepreneur spirit. So where did you get that from? Were, were you, were you grown to be that way or is it just in your DNA? Yeah. You know, I, I think in a lot of ways, uh, while not purposefully, I was groomed to be that way. And, and, and here's, here's why. See, I grew up in my grandfather's household, uh, my sister and I. And so from the time that I was in the fifth grade uh, up until I graduated college, you know, I literally lived in his household. And so while he was world renowned, if you will, as a head football coach at Grantland State and, you know, ultimately becoming the winningest coach in division one college football and all these great things, what people really don't know is that uh, my grandfather was an entrepreneur. So well, anytime, yeah, he, we, we owned uh, apartment complexes. And, you know, so that was, you know, uh, one of his ventures. But as you know now, have, have come to know the town city of Gramlin, there's, there's quite a bit of opportunity in, front, in terms of, in, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, to, to bring businesses into the community. And so while, even though we had the, the apartments, my grandfather was always trying to do more, but my grandmother wouldn't let him. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he wanted to, you know, when they, at one point they had a Sonic and, you know, but he wanted to do that way before. He wanted to do a McDonald's. He, um, he wanted to do a hotel. Uh, and then, and then even a, a grocery store, but all of these different things. And I would hear him, uh, maybe lament is not fair, uh, but, but he was eager above and beyond, he, you know, he's got daily schedule for coaching and, and recruiting and all these different things. Yet he had a drive to do more. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's where it started in terms of understanding that you can always do more. Uh, and then from, from there, uh, you know, I, I like to tell people SD, I don't think I've ever had a real job. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, I, I graduated, got my commission as a second Lieutenant in the United States Air Force. But when I had left the Air Force, I went to work for my family and then I went to work for myself and I've been working for myself ever since. And so to that end, you know, that, that's where that entrepreneurial drive comes from. It, it's really, for me, and, you know, it, it doesn't work for, for everyone, but I, I just don't necessarily believe in making somebody else's dreams, you know, come true. I want to make my dreams come true. And then through my efforts, then if I can help someone along the way, okay, that's great. But I, I, I gotta, I gotta be, you know, running, running the show. Not, not, not because I, I've been, you know, top dog. I've been number two, maybe even number three at, at, right. at different points in, in the company. But I've always been C-suite. So, right. Right. Um, and and that that is just you know part of, of who I am as a leader. Um, but you know, I, I think it, that that's critical, you know, as well. Oh, no doubt. So, and we'll get into Big Sticks 5 uh, Gaming, your new project. And once again, people, I got CEO Michael Watkins, CEO of 1619 Gaming Group. We're going to talk about this big project that's coming out tomorrow, actually, New Year's Day. Uh, yeah, big yeah. Sticks 5. It's a twist to it. It's dominoes mixed with poker, chips. It's a twist to it. We'll get into that. Just kind of want to dive into his history a little bit. So what are some of the obstacles you faced as an entrepreneur that, that other budding entrepreneurs uh, can take from, from your lessons or, or your trials and tribulations? Yeah, that, that, that's a great question, uh, SD. The, the biggest obstacle I think that m most any entrepreneur will face, you know, easily the inclination is to say capital. It's not capital. The universe will provide you whatever you need. 
It's the belief, the thought that I can and I will. And I, I often have this conversation with our team members, not my business partner. Uh, Neil is, 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 is about as driven as anyone else you know, can be. But we explain to people, sometimes you just have to will things uh, into, into reality. And if you don't know how to do that, uh, or, or if you don't have the fortitude to do that, then you are in the wrong line of work 